Hey guys, welcome back to Rated RPG. Ray here. Today we are talking about Mass Effect the Legendary Edition. There is a lot of Mass Effect news today. Uh, there was this big deep dive uh, video from IGN. I went over that in a different video, however, because that was looking more at the visual side of things, and I wanted to just go through that in a different video. Here we're going to be reading through this uh, article on PlayStation Blog, which is also on over on EA, whatever, and also on Reddit. It's the same article posted in multiple places, going through a lot of the mechanical changes, a lot of the improvements and fine tuning of the game. So I want us to go through, read it, and talk about the changes on a more detailed level that we wouldn't have seen just in that gameplay demonstration. So let's take a look at this now. Uh, this is written by Jay Ingram, Community Manager, EA Bioware. So yada, 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 more details. Very happy to hear about that. Let's see, we have a quick look at, uh, what do we got here? This is a quick look at, at uh, it's not Vermeer, is it? No, this is Vermeer. And we can see the change in the HUD and the ui because i mean look at this this is mass effect one the uh overheat system has been completely redone shield systems redone health is redone character portraits character positions uh textures are so much better but that's neither here nor there let's get to looking at this combat tuning combat in the mass effect trilogy has evolved across the series with each game's experience being different we wanted to make the experience better across the board, but did not want to unnecessarily change what our fans came to love. So, do 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 do. That proved a unique challenge as the first game is quite different from the second and third in terms of gameplay and combat. No shit. Uh, Mass Effect was heavily influenced by traditional RPG mechanics like the randomness of a dice roll and pen and paper stat building. I think Dragon Age may be more than Mass Effect. As a result, weapons in Mass Effect often felt less accurate and reliable than the gunplay in Mass Effect 2 and 3. Oh dear god, yes, that is true. We heard the consistent feedback that it's pretty frustrating to take a few shots with an assault rifle and suddenly have the reticule enlarged to span across a large portion of the screen, so we looked at tuning the mechanics to provide better handling without outright scrapping the spirit of the original games. Yes, if you don't recall, back in the original Mass Effect 1, it didn't matter what weapon you were using. If you were using an assault rifle, if you were using a sniper rifle, if you were using a pistol or a shotgun, anytime you took a shot, the reticule would actually get bigger and your accuracy would go down, and that was horrible. The only way to basically overcome that was by using a skill, which for a certain amount of time would just lock your reticule. I forget what the skill was called, but I would spam that skill like a mofo because I hated it. Uh... So, or I would just bust out the shotgun and just get so close that uh, missing was not an option. So, let's continue. In the first Mass Effect, accuracy, including reticule bloom and weapon sway, has been tuned across all weapons to allow players to maintain more consistent firepower, firepower while still managing their shot's overheat meter. We've improved the aiming down sights, camera view to be tighter on combat so that ADS is more accurate. Uh, similar to the second and third game, we've improved the aim assist to prov provide better precision. These small behind-the-scenes changes collectively make combat snappier. So basically, not scrapping things, as they said, but making things much smoother, which I am looking forward to. I want to have good gunplay in Mass Effect 1. Not just good story, but let's get good gunplay behind there as well. Abilities have been rebalanced. For example, immunity now grants a powerful defensive buff for a short period of time instead of a small buff for a long time. Powerful buff, short time, instead of small buff, long time. Hmm. Me love you, long time. Okay, so what are list of gameplay changes? Let's go through these. Shepard can now sprint out of combat. Cool. Melee weapons are now mapped to a button press rather than automatically occurring based on proximity. So you can get up in someone's face and shoot. And there's a dedicated melee button like in Mass Effect 2 and 3. This is great. I love this. Thank you. Weapon accuracy and handling has been improved. We just read about that. Reticule Bloom. We just read about that. Weapon Sway. Removed from sniper rifles. Oh my gosh. I love playing as an infiltrator in Mass Effect 2 and 3, but I would never play as one in Mass Effect 1 because 
Uh, the oh my god, because the weapon sway in a sniper rifle was horrible, horrid. So this is fantastic that they have removed weapon sway from a sniper rifle. I can now play Infiltrator through all three games. Oh my gosh, aiming down sights, camera view has been improved, improved target acquisition, uh, aim assist. I'm turning that off. All relevant enemies now take headshot damage in the first game, including some didn't apparently. Ammo mods can now drop throughout the whole game. Previously, they stopped dropping at high levels. Wow, I did not know that. Uh, available for purchase from merchants. All weapons can be used by any class without penalty. Uh, specializations are still class specific, however. Good. I did not like that. I Okay, I can kind of understand that anybody can use any weapon. But the fact I still like that specializations are still a thing because in an Andromeda... There was really, everything felt too samey. Every class, there was no classes in Andromeda. Everything felt exactly the same. Weapons cool down much faster. Yes, thank you. Metagel usage has been improved. Cooldown reduced. Level but things to increase. Increased Liara's bonus to cooldowns. Liara getting some love. Inventory management system improvements. Items can now be flagged as junk. There is so much items in Mass Effect 1. That's a good thing. All junk items can now be converted or sold. Great. Inventory and stores can now have sorting functionality. Great. Uh, abilities rebalanced. Weapon powers have been improved. Yada, yada, yada. Heat now re resets on power activation. That's cool. Uh, so what else we got? We got another photo. Uh, this looks like the garage in Novaria, which has a lot of new lighting, which looks really nice. So... Continuing additional gameplay improvements. Uh, we've made some specific improved changes to encounters, enemies, and how you engage in combat. I uh, found a few opportunities to bring the first game in line with the second and third games. We're aware of that. Let's see. Do, 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 do. One example is the boss encounter on Novaria. The boss room has been slightly reworked, keeping it very familiar, but making it less cramped. This, I believe, is a reference to the changes made to the Benezia fight. Other combat upgrades updates include squad mates can now be commanded independently of each other in the first Mass Effect, the same way they can be commanded individually in 2 and 3. Some boss fights and enemies in the first game have been tweaked for to be fair for players, but still challenging. I'm assuming that means Benezia and the Krogan on uh, Therum. Was it Therum, I believe? Cover has been improved across the trilogy. Additional cover exiting exiting entering exiting cover more reliable xp has been rebalanced whatever that means uh are you getting more xp or what ammo drops have been rebalanced in me2 i don't remember there being much of a problem with ammo in me2 but maybe there's maybe there uh it's been a long time since i played uh with Let's read this, and so we have a full understanding. With combat comes XP. XP gain during the first game has been rebalanced for better consistency, especially towards the game end. So basically, you're not stuck during the end game. Uh, players who complete the mo most aspects of the game should be able to more reliably get to higher levels on a single playthrough rather than needing to play through a second time to do so. Additionally, there's no longer a level cap. That is nice. So you can just keep on leveling up, especially if you do all the optional combat. Uh, content. Uh, do, 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 do. We also tweaked ammunition in Mass Effect 2. We found that ammo was spawning too scarcely in the original game, so we've increased the drop rate for ammo in ME2, particularly when using a sniper rifle, since that had a reduced ammo drop rate in the original release. Wow. Uh, I don't know. I feel like that made me a better sniper. Made me had to be more consistent with my headshots. Ah, jeez. I played sniper a lot in Mass Effect 2, so... I'm all for having more ammo drops, especially if I'm using the Widowmaker, but I don't want it to become too easy, if you know what I mean. Okay, the Mako. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Trying to make it less bouncy. That's what a lot of this basically says. This functionality has been improved with faster shield recharging. New thrusters, basically the same as the Nomad in Mass Effect Andromeda. The Nomad was kind of pointless in my opinion because they did not need all of these open world sections, but uh, one thing it did have that was nice was the booster thrust from getting to point A to point B faster. They've added boosters to the Mako, which is nice. 
Uh, let's see, not just vertical boost, but actually a forward boost. Uh, let's see, the boost recharge is independent from the jet jump jets, so you can use both at once or separately. Boom. So, improved handling. Physics improved to feel weightier and slide around less. Thank you. Improved camera controls. Uh, pre resolved issues preventing the Mako from accurately aiming at lower angles. Yeah. Uh, I remember back in the original game when you were on a slope where the reticule was aiming, you wouldn't actually hit. So you would have to, basically, if you were firing at a long distance or at an angle, you would have to experiment and see until you can actually hit what you're aiming at, even though that the reticule wasn't anywhere near there. Shields recharge faster, new thrusters, yada, yada, yada. XP penalty while in the Mako has been removed. Thank you. I remember there was this thing in the original game, when you were in the Mako, if you ran a guy over, for example, or shot him with your cannon, you would not get as much XP as when you were just shooting the guy with your gun. So now, you can just run him over and still get the same amount of XP. That's nice. Touching lava no longer results in an instant mission failure and instead deals damage over time. Okay, when you're when you're trying to get a hold of the uh, controls on Therum, which I believe is one of the first places you use the Mako, it'd, it'd be nice not to have an automatic uh, game over uh, if you accidentally... Uh, the floor is lava. Uh, let's see, we've got a lot of stuff happening, having to do with character creation that has to go with uh, making the trilogy kind of a unity thing. A lot of this just goes with importing, bringing the ME3 uh, Shepard into ME1 and 2. New hairstyles, new colors, improved just visuals in terms of uh, just facial models. That looks a lot better. Her face doesn't look like a mushed up plastic like the original Mass Effect 1. So uh, new unified launcher for all three games includes trilogy-wide settings for subtitles and languages. Saves are still unique to each game and can be managed independently of each other. So if you're wanting to save scum your way through one game versus the other without it affecting those, you can do that. Updated character creator options. Fem Shep is from Mass Effect 3 is now the default. Original Fem Shep design is still available as a preset, so added a preset. Trophies across the trilogy have been updated. New trophies have been added to the trilogy. That's interesting. Progress for some now carries over across all three games. Interesting. So if there's a trophy that's especially grindy in Mass Effect 1 and you don't get that finished, maybe you can pop it in Mass Effect 2 and all that data will just carry over. That's nice. Uh, let's see. Updated. Integrated weapons and armor DLC packs. Weapons and armor DLC packs are now integrated naturally into the game. They're obtainable via research or by purchasing them from merchants as you progress through the game rather than being immediately unlocked from the start. Well, that's not going to make me a powerhouse from the start. I wanted to be a just badass can mow through anything from immediately by just busting out my infinite ammo firewalker assault rifle. This ensures overall balance of progression across ME2, ME3. Recon Hood and Cerberus Ajax armor are available at the start of each game. So some skins are available at the start. Uh, let's see. Quality of life improvements. Audio is remixed. Uh, legacy bugs from the original releases are fixed. Not all of them, as Mac Walter said, but the big ones. What else do we got? Oh, that was in his... I in the IGN video, not here. So, Mac Walter said they did not fix every bug, but they fixed a lot of them. Uh, let's see, Galaxy at War rebalancing. Basically, stuff having to do with the war map, uh, uh, what were they called? War assets and obtaining endings. They've rebalanced a lot of the stuff there in terms of uh, building up your galactic readiness for getting the end game done. And that's a lot of what we learned today. That's a lot of information. This video probably took more longer than you thought it would, but there's a lot of information here. Uh, let's see, Mass Effect News over on Twitter has kind of summarized some of these changes for us. So, no major changes to ME1, UNC Worlds, or Assignments. So, they are not altering quests. Uh, 
Let's see, grindy achievements can be completed throughout the trilogy. We just said that. No new difficulty settings. That is a thing I did read in one of the other articles. Uh, like how in Mass Effect 3 there was a narrative setting where there wasn't in Mass Effect 1 and 2. They are not adding new difficulty settings. You still have to play on basic or uh, normal. You, there's no just narrative setting. Let's see, original main menus remain intact. So yes, while there is a unified launcher... Uh, each game can be accessed through a separate menu and each, as we said earlier, each game's save files can be managed independently of each other. Here's something interesting. I'm not sure why this is, but ME1 scars will not be available in Mass Effect 2 and 3. I believe that's in terms of character creator. So there will not, you won't be able to use certain scars in the character creator but if one's already on your imported Shepard model, that will still import. Unless they get rid of that after Shepard's been all blown to hell at the beginning of 2. I'm not sure. Cannot Can neither confirm nor deny that. And we've got, of course, a lot of people on Twitter just responding. So, what else do we got? Uh, screenshots. We already saw these. I believe I popped all of these out. Uh, Novaria, Novaria, Vermeer. Uh, character creator so yeah there's a lot happening guys uh i'm excited i cannot wait for may to get here i want to play this game so bad if you want to read through this uh, entire blog post in depth for yourself i will post it in the description down below but let me know what you think are you as freaking excited as i am uh let me know what you think like comment subscribe bell icon notifications and let's just nerd out together because i can't wait because it looks beautiful, it looks awesome, and it just sounds like it's going to play so awesome. So, I'll catch you next time. I just want to go... Well, well I, I, have to, I have to process this, so... And then post it, so yeah, I do need to go. So, catch you next time. Later. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Rated RPG. I appreciate you checking out the channel. Be sure to hit that like button if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell icon for notifications so you can get all the latest updates from Rated RPG.